You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to yet another episode of Takeshi Tuesdays. And once again, we're doing a movie review, and obviously, once again, one that Takeshi acted in but didn't direct. I almost feel like I don't need to do that disclaimer anymore, because obviously, he didn't direct any of the ones that I've been reviewing lately, since I've already reviewed all of his directorial work. But obviously, that is subject to change, should he direct another movie. Much like last time, Takeshi's role in this was actually very minor, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's first talk about the movie itself. Uh, warning, this is going to be one of the episodes where I do have spoilers spoilers because I feel like it's an obscure enough movie that not a lot of people have talked about it and I want to describe the plot for those of you who, who haven't seen it and in addition to that I also feel like uh, I wouldn't really be doing it justice with a review without talking about the plot details in a little bit of depth. Uh, I may not give away absolutely everything, but there are going to be several major plot points which I will be spoiling. But, uh, obviously today we'll be talking about Mosquito on the Tenth Floor, which is a very interesting name for the movie. Um, I'm not quite sure I understand the Mosquito thing, maybe they're trying to say he's a bloodsucker. Um, he does live on the tenth floor of an apartment complex, but, but, uh, essentially it's the story of a policeman, uh, who lives in an apartment complex, has a hobby for computer games, and is ultimately struggling. He can't seem to get a promotion, constantly fails the test to get a promotion to a higher police ranking. He's stuck at sergeant and stuck as the chief of a police box, so he just stands in a police box all day. In addition to that, he has to pay, uh, he has to deal with constantly having to pay child support for his daughter and having to deal with his ex-wife. The movie itself runs for an hour and 48 minutes, or as they would normally put it, 108 minutes. It was released on July 2nd, 1983, and was directed by Yoichi Sai. It also, uh, the main star of the movie is Yuya Uchida, uh, and he plays the main character, the cop I've been describing up until now, a cop by the name of Akai. Me. Strangely, though, on IMDb, he's simply credited as Hero, which I think is a very strange title given the events of this film. So, like I said, he's struggling, he's dealing with all this hardship, he's constantly gambling on boat races to try and get more money, um, and that's where Takeshi comes in. Takeshi is only in one scene, really, where he's sort of a bookie that gives hints on, you know, which boat's gonna win the race, and then he takes the bets. And that's the entirety of Takeshi's presence in the movie. Yuya Uchida, I've definitely gained a respect for having seen this in Comic Magazine, because Yuya Uchida was also the main actor in Comic Magazine, uh, which I reviewed last season. So anyway, he's dealing with all this hardship, and uh, eventually he just kind of snaps. This movie is a downfall of the protagonist type movie, where it basically starts with a protagonist in like a good position, like an honorable position, a good guy, who slowly becomes worse as the movie goes on, although this time, it's not really that gradual. It's pretty quick to escalate once it starts picking up. Like, literally the first thing we see in his, like, major downfall, other than, you know, being a drunk, because he keeps drinking a ton, uh, and gambling a ton, he doesn't really get really shit-faced drunk until after this next scene I'm gonna talk about, but what happens is he catches a woman stealing alcohol from the store, he quote-unquote arrests her, but really he just takes her back to his apartment and he rapes her. Um, and she's not the only one he does this to. He does it at least twice more in the movie to different women, including his ex-wife. And these scenes vary in how explicit they are. Some of them are implied, some of them are much more explicit. It just depends on the scenes. Uh, he also gets into a bar fight, and uh, he also uses excessive force with his baton when he's uh, breaking up a fight on the street. Um, he takes out a bunch of loans that he can't afford to pay back, and when they come to collect it, he beats the shit out of them too. And at the end of the movie, he just full-on snaps, goes into a, uh, throws his computer off a balcony, goes into a post office at gunpoint, robs them blind and beats the shit out of one of their employees for no reason at all, completely unprovoked. And ultimately, the movie does end with him getting arrested. Um, this was definitely a very interesting movie. I'm, I'm much a fan of the downfall of the protagonist type series, and in a way, I feel like this is kind of the opposite of Comic Magazine. Because both films obviously starred Yuya Uchida. In Comic Magazine, he started out as kind of a despicable tabloid journalist who's going around you know, getting celebrity gossip, but ultimately does the honorable thing in the end in trying to defend a guy who the police are murdering. But in this, he starts out as a good guy, an honorable cop, and by the end of it, he becomes a rapist, uh, someone who beats the shit out of people, uh, a, a robber, um, and just overall just does a lot of bad things by the end of the movie. Interestingly, Yuya Uchida has a one-liner in this, similarly to how he did in comic magazine, and it's, it's, it's my favorite scene in the movie, just like it is in comic magazine. Yuya Uchida's performance is what sells this movie. By the end of the movie, you can see the fucking insanity in his eyes. He's lost it. Um, he's completely gone. Now, the one-liner in question is when he's robbing the post office, and he's, like, already beat the shit out of the guy, he's taken all of their money at gunpoint, you know, dragged everyone into a corner, um, with, you know, physical force, um, and he's like, sorry for the trouble, 
And then he's like, if you need anything, I'll be in the police box. I'm there all day. I'm just so nonchalantly after doing all of this horrible shit. And it's such a great line. I don't know why it sticks with me so much. But it's just like at the end of Comic Magazine where he's like, I don't speak fucking Japanese. But Yuya Uchida is definitely an underrated actor. Um, I feel like it's even more confusing because there's at least three different famous Yuya Uchidas in Japan. There's this one, there's a voice actor, and there's a singer. I can't find a lot of information about this one other than his IMDb page, which has very little information about him other than the films he was in, but he was apparently also in Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, so there you go, which I reviewed not that long ago on this. But I will definitely be checking out more U uh, Yuya Uchida works because he's such a good actor. His performance is definitely what sells this movie. You really feel that this character has just lost his goddamn mind and that he's just completely snapped. Um, and you really feel the insanity within him as you see him going and doing all this terrible shit by the end of the movie. Um, so overall, this was a great movie. Like I said, Takeshi's presence was very, very minimal in it, unfortunately. But it was still a good scene. Uh, in fact, Takeshi's character beats up someone who questions him when he actually gets there, um, when he actually gave them a bad prediction. So he's still very much in Takeshi, you know, typecast and very well. So still worth watching if you're a Takeshi fan, but definitely if you like Comic Magazine, if you've somehow seen this, and I don't don't think a lot of English speakers have. Um, if you've seen Comic Magazine, then you'll definitely like this too. I feel like they kind of go hand in hand, and I will definitely be checking out more of Yuya Uchida. But anyway, that's all I really have to say about Mosquito on the 10th floor. This has been Fugitive Red Eye. Have a good one. I'm a Michael Jordan.